Hello and welcome to episode 212 of the official EstablishTheRun.com podcast. My name is Adam Levitan and I am back as I am each week for another edition of Market Mondays. As always, this podcast is designed to get you up to speed quickly on recent average draft position, aka ADP movement in the fantasy football markets. In the show notes, you can find a free link to charts and the full article on this topic from ETR Director of Analytics and the man behind all this, Michael Leone. All right, let's get into this because we had some major, major injuries last week that are shaking things up in a big, big way. Obviously, the biggest riser in the last seven days is Rams running back Daryl Henderson. Cam Akers, of course, is out for the year, leaving only the likes of Xavier Jones, Jake Funk, Raymond Calais behind D. Hendo. In underdog drafts on Sunday, Henderson's ADP was 62.9. On NFFC since Thursday, Daryl Henderson is at 52.8. So, you know, the early fifth round or so. I think part of the reason the ADP hasn't gotten even higher is because everyone expects the Rams to add a running back. And I do too. But who will it be? There's not many guys out there. Maybe they can trade for Melvin Gordon. But more likely, it's someone ultra dusty like Adrian Peterson or Le'Veon Bell or Duke Johnson or TJ Yeldon or Todd Gurley. And so I think Daryl Henderson's pass catching ability, his draft capital, he was a third round pick in 2019, his explosiveness, you know, he's, he's an explosive guy. He's struggled badly with ankle injuries the last two seasons, but is healthy now. And I mean, just his role on a very good team and offense, which prefers to run the ball near the goal line. So I'm in line with the market here. I am fine using a fifth round pick on Daryl Henderson if I want to go running back, but still ideally I'm going wide receiver or even tight end in this range with guys like Jamar Chase, Tyler Lockett, T. Higgins, Kyle Pitts. But for more on this, check out episode 209 did last week with Silva. One thing worth noting is the rise of mid-round wide receivers. As more people avoid running backs in rounds four, five, six, guys like Robbie Anderson and Chase Claypool are gaining steam. Robbie Anderson is up to 62nd overall on underdog from 64th, Claypool up to 59th from 61st. We think those guys are fine there, but there's a lot of value in grabbing a top tier quarterback, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott in that spot. Or if you don't have a tight end yet, Pitts and Mark Andrews are in play. You know, a bit of zigging as the field zags towards wide receivers so, so hard on underdog. And I know that on DraftKings where you can get wide receivers a bit later, they have even more valuable thanks to those full PPR distributions. And I'd also note that in home leagues, And in softer formats like FFPC, that Robbie Anderson and Chase Claypool and most wide receivers that we like, they last a lot longer, you know, making them still really strong bets there. So again, be aware of your format and where the ADP is. Another riser is Damian Harris, just continues to surge. He's up to 90th overall on NFFC from 102nd. His ADP on underdog has already peaked even higher than that. And it's probably somewhat to do with some of the rhetoric coming From Mike Reese and ESPN Boston about how Damian Harris is very clearly the number one back. Sonny Michelle is a trade candidate. He's a guy candidate to not even make the team. And I get it on Damian Harris. You know, he is the no doubt number one early down back on a Patriots team with an excellent offensive line and a run first profile. But man, this kind of running back is just not the kind of running back that I like to target. Literally zero pass catching projection on kind of a mad team with a quarterback in Cam Newton who racked up an absolutely absurd 19 carries from inside the five yard line last year. If they go to Mac Jones, it'll be a little boost for Damian Harris, but I'm still out on him at these really surging ADPs. When he was going in round 11, 12, or 13, it was a different story. Damian Harris was a value bet. Last riser we're gonna talk about today is another Patriot and one that we've talked about before. It is Jacoby Myers, who was a big riser a couple weeks ago and is rising again, now up to 149th overall on underdog from 155. I mean, just for the record, Jacoby, since the 2019 preseason has been my boy. I mean, he was first team all preseason that year, absolutely dominated for the hashtag team preseason. He's played very well in the regular season as well. I am fine with him as a flyer here in this kind of 150 range, but I think I'd rather go with guys like Paris Campbell, Sterling Shepard, Brian Edwards first, but it's certainly close and Jacoby is in the mix there. All right, let's get to some fallers. Obviously, the biggest faller is Michael Thomas. Thomas underwent ankle surgery in June. News broke last week. We are projecting him to return roughly around week seven following the Saints' week six bye. 
But that is just a guess. I mean, this ankle has been an issue for so, so long now. And June's surgery is tough, man. Would not shock me at all if he's nowhere near full strength or in full football shape until well after week seven. Also wouldn't shock me if the Saints offense just craters. Given they have one of the league's worst wide receiver cores, they're counting heavily on Adam Troutman at tight end. They'll be using some combo of Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston at quarterback. In underdog drafts on Sunday, Thomas went at an average of 48th overall. On FFPC, he's at 54th, NFFC 57th. I personally would pass on Michael Thomas at these ADPs. There's just so much opportunity cost that high. You know, give me Robbie Anderson and Claypool and Deontay Johnson and Galladay and Ayuk and Beckham and Boyd and Chark if I'm going wide receiver there. For more on this, though, I talked about it with Justin Herzig. Check out episode 211. One quick side note on this. Jameis Winston's ADP is sinking and Taysom Hill's ADP is rising. And yes, I think that's right. I mean, we expect Sean Payton to lean more into Taysom as he gets creative to try to squeeze out wins here through his defense, his offensive line, and a rushing quarterback like Taysom. And when Taysom is a full-time quarterback, I mean, he's a no-doubt fantasy stud thanks to his rushing ability. Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Taysom Hill, just the nut late-round quarterbacks who are going to run the football and run a lot. Another follower is our old friend Fat Len, a.k.a. Uncle Lenny, a.k.a. Playoff Lenny, a.k.a. Lombardi Lenny, a.k.a. White House Lenny. He is down to 118th overall from 113 on underdog, and he's down five to eight spots on FFPC and NFFC as well. As I've discussed, you know, Gio Bernard seizing all of the pass down and two minute work is just such a big story. It's devastating to Lenny, and it's not great for Ronald Jones either. You know, Jones is a better runner than Fournette, so if, if Gio does hold down all this pass down work, we're looking at Lenny as a 1B on a first or second down only premise and no two minute drill. Like that's really rough for Lenny. So again, following that Gio Bernard news closely, you're gonna see just how much of the third down work he gets. Hopefully we get a good read on that in the preseason. Last thing I wanted to mention is this Deshaun Watson situation. And I've been following it pretty closely all off season. There's still no criminal charges against him, but more than 20 sexual assault civil allegations against him. One thing we know is that the NFL and Roger Goodell do not need a conviction or even criminal charges to put a player on the commissioner's exempt list, which is essentially a suspension. But Goodell's been really quiet here, and Watson has reported to Texans camp to avoid fines, not because he will play for the Texans, because he wants to avoid the fines. Still, I'd be pretty surprised if there was no suspension of any kind. Now that said, teams still badly want to trade for Deshaun Watson. I mean, even before all these off-field issues, Deshaun Watson made it clear he does not want to play for the Texans ever again. And I really think the Eagles make the most sense. They have three first round picks in 2022. They have Jalen Hurts. They aren't really contenders this year. We have moved Deshaun Watson up in our rankings to account for the chance that he somehow avoids a long suspension and plays for someone like the Eagles, Dolphins, or Broncos. I think in best ball, it's worth it to start taking some stabs on Deshaun Watson late here, but we need to be nimble on the news. Just because there's no suspension yet doesn't mean that there won't be on Deshaun Watson. So for sure, stay on top of all the news with him. We'll do the best we can. Follow me on Twitter at Adam Levitan. Follow Establish the Run at Establish the Run. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this third episode of Market Mondays. Actually, I think it was the fourth episode of Market Mondays. If you have any feedback, positive or negative, leave us a review on iTunes, tweet it at me, hit us up in the ETR Discord. Preseason DFS starts very, very soon, a little over one week away. Details about that are up on the subscribe page now. The bundle is also up on the site, puts together the draft kit and in season, by far, by far the best deal we will offer all season. Also, I know many of you listening to this already have our draft kit. Please be sure to take advantage of the underdog credit. It's literally free money either $10 or $35. You're silly to miss it. Take the free money. We'll be back tomorrow with Silva to talk round two player by player deep dives. Many of you enjoyed the round one version. We did, so we will run it back for Jerry, for Leone behind the scenes. I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.